Hello, this is Scott Dahman of PowerWorld Corporation. In this session, we will examine PowerWorld Simulator's linear sensitivity analysis tools, which include power transfer distribution factors, transmission loading relief or t generation shift factors, multiple direction PTDFs, and multiple element TLRs, line outage distribution factors, outage transfer distribution factors, which are just combinations of PTDFs and line outage distribution factors, or LODFs, and several other related sensitivities. Simulator also has an advanced line loading replicator tool and several tools on the connections menu. The power transfer distribution factor, or PTDF, is a term defined by NERC to indicate the incremental impact of a transfer of power between areas on system flows. When you calculate the PTDF, you specify a buyer and a seller, and then the PTDF sensitivity tool tells you how much of that transaction flows on each line in the system. PTDFs can also be visualized on one-line diagrams. In PowerWorld Simulator, open the sample case called B7 flat. Click on the Tools ribbon, solve the power flow case, make sure you're in run mode, and then go to the Sensitivities drop-down box and click on Power Transfer Distribution Factors. The PTDF calculation shows what percent of a transfer between a buyer and a seller would appear on each transmission line in the power system. The PTDF is calculated using the Jacobian matrix from a solved power flow solution. The delta P is a change in power injections associated with the transfer between the buyer and the seller. And the delta X is a change in system voltages. And from here, the flows can be derived. In the PTDF tool, you must specify a seller and a buyer. Sellers can be areas, zones, super areas, an island slack bus, an injection group, or a specific bus. And buyers have the same options. If you choose area, zone, or super area for either the seller or the buyer, that indicates that the generators in the area will participate according to their participation factors. You can use the injection group seller or buyer type to represent a group of generators or loads or some combination thereof. In that case, the participation factor associated with each participation point inside the injection group determines how much each element within the injection group will move in the transfer. This slide explains some of the options for specifying the transfer direction and the buyer and the seller. In simulator, let's set up a transfer between bus number 2 and bus number 5. So for the seller, I'll choose the option for bus, and then from the drop-down, I'll select bus 2. Similarly for the buyer, I'll select bus 5. Simulator also allows you to specify a linear calculation method. The linear, linearized AC method uses the full Jacobian and thus incorporates losses. In this way, a PTDF could have a different value on one end of a transmission line than on the other. The lossless DC does not incorporate losses. The lossless DC with phase shifters incorporate, does not incorporate losses, and it also assumes that phase shifters will try to maintain their present set point. This slide explains more details about the different calculation methods. When we're ready to calculate the PTDFs, 
we can just click the button that says Calculate PTDFs. Then we can look at the results down in this bottom section. There's a separate sub-tab for lines and transformers, interfaces, areas, zones, generators, and phase shifters, which are just a subset of the lines and transformers. But this display will show some specific characteristics of how the phase shifters behave during the transfer. On the line and transformer results, I can see the PTDS expressed as a percent on the from end of each line and on the to end of each line. I can see that over half of the transfer between bus 2 and bus 5 appears on the line that connects them directly. But almost half of that transfer loops through the system on other lines as well. I can also look at the results for interfaces. These are the area to area tie line interfaces that are in the case. The Areas, Zones, and Generators tab each show how each generator responds in the transfer. This would have a little bit more meaning if you used the Area, Zone, or Super Area transfer types for buyer or seller. In this case, we're taking the injections for the buyer and seller at specific buses, so it doesn't need to report how each generator in the system responds. I can also choose to visualize the PTDFs on the one-line diagram. Now if I look at my one-line diagram, the black arrows are showing the PTDF values. And I can see that most of the flow is taking the direct route from 2 to 5, but there's also looping that's going through the system. You can change the characteristics of the PTDF arrows by going into the One Lines ribbon and then the One Line Display options. Choose Animated Flows on the left. And then you can specify what color is used for PTDFs. You can also specify that a different color be used for counter flows on PTDFs. And this would indicate lines in which the PTDF runs in the opposite direction of the underlying flow. If I change the PTDF counterflow color to orange, and then also click the button to set the size, density, and reference values for this one line, then I can see on my one line diagram that the PTDF from bus 3 to bus 4 actually represents a counterflow. If I go back to my PTDF menu and then choose Visualize Megawatt Flows, I can see that the flow from 4 to 3 is actually going in the opposite direction. So the transfer that I'm proposing between 2 and 5 while it tends to increase the loading on some lines, actually relieves others. If I choose the AC calculation method and then recalculate the PTDFs, I can see that the PTDF at the front end and the two end of the line is different in most cases, and I can also see how the losses change. I can also see that losses for the system as a whole increase by 6.08% due to this transfer. You can also choose to filter the list of results using the area zone filters or by using a minimum PTDF value. If I change this to 5%, then I can see that some of the results drop off the screen. This slide summarizes some of the features on the PTDF dialog. In addition to the ones we discussed, you can also click a button to reverse the buyer and seller, and then recalculate the PTDFs.
This slide shows PTDFs on an area one-line diagram with interfaces shown between the areas. In this example, a transfer is modeled between area left and area right, and the results show that 63% of that transfer takes a direct path on the tie lines between area left and area right, while 37% loops through area top. The one-line display options that we looked at can be used to show how PTDFs will be displayed on the one-line diagram. You can also go to the pie chart option category inside the one-line display options to select that PTDFs be used in the pie charts. The options ribbon tab also has a quick way to access the pie chart options and also the animated flow options. This slide shows PTDFs on a one-line diagram for a large case. The pie charts show the PTDFs on the tie lines between different areas. The pie charts are also formatted to change size dynamically for different PTDF values. Next, we'll look at the transmission loading relief factor or the generation shift factors. Both of these terms mean the same thing. While the PTDF determines the impact of one transfer on all of the lines in the system, the TLR is focused on one transmission line and looks at the effect of many different transfers. Both the PTDF and the TLR are linear sensitivities that relate power injections at nodes in the system with flows on transmission lines. You could represent all of these sensitivities in a large table, where the columns represent different transfer directions and the rows represent the different transmission lines or transformers. Then the table entry at row N and column M would be the distribution factor of the mth transfer on the N branch. And again, the distribution factors could be referred to as PTDFs or TLRs. With this table analogy, the PTDF would give you an, a column in the table and the TLR would give you a row in the table. This slide shows the table graphically with the transfer directions along the top and the list of lines forming the rows. So the TLR calculation would give you a row in the table and the PTDF calculation would give you a column. To access the TLR tool from the tools ribbon, go to sensitivities and then TLR sensitivities slash generation shift factors. The TLR may be calculated for an individual line or transformer, an individual interface, or for multiple elements. And we'll come back and talk about multiple element TLR and PTDF in just a moment. For this example, let's examine the TLRs for the transmission line between bus 2 and bus 5. Next, we specify a transactor for one half of the transaction. Let's select bus 5 for one half. Then when we calculate the TLR sensitivities, the sensitivities given will be those for injections at all of the other points in the system taken out at bus 5, and it'll look at the effect on 2 to 5. You can also specify a transactor type as either being buyer or seller, and that refers to the transactor. So in this case, I've chosen bus 5 and I'll leave bus 5 as the buyer, which means that the power will be taken out at bus 5 and injected at all the other points in the system. For the reverse, you can specify the transactor as the seller, and then the power will be injected at that point and taken out at all the other points in the system. Similar to the PTDF calculation, we can also choose area, zone, or super area transactors 
in which case the generators in those respective area zone or super areas would participate according to their participation factors. We can choose a slack bus or we can choose an injection group. Next we can also select a calculation method just like with the PTDF we can use the full AC, lossless DC or lossless DC with phase shifters. Another option just for the TLR is you can choose to clear the values before calculating in which case the values will be recalculated every time you click calculate TLR sensitivities. So if you change the options up here and then recalculate the TLR sensitivities you'll get a completely new set of values based on the options that you specify up here. The append on calculate option will only replace the values when you recalculate if they are larger than the ones that were previously stored. And it's important to note that larger means uh, not in the absolute value sense, but that positive numbers are larger than negative numbers. So when I'm ready to calculate, I'll go ahead and click the Calculate TLR Sensitivities. And then it'll give me the numbers down here as a fraction of 1. Uh, basically, it's the same calculation that you're getting in the PTDF, uh, but whereas the PTDF expressed the numbers in percentages, uh, this sensitivity is just as a fraction of 1. So the entire transfer between the transactor and the other points in the system, as shown down here, uh, is considered one unit. Uh, you can think of it as being one megawatt. And then the p-sensitivity shows then a fraction of that megawatt. We can also examine how the numbers are related in the TLR calculation and in the PTDF calculation. Recall in the PTDF calculation we looked at a transfer between bus 2 and bus 5. In this case we specified bus 5 as one half of the transaction and we've looked at uh, all the buses down here in the system transacting with bus 5. In the case of bus 2, the sensitivity is 0.533. If we look at the PTDFs that we calculated earlier, for bus 2 to bus 5, if we look at the element in the PTDF of the branch from 2 to 5, we see the sensitivity as being 53.32%, which is basically the same number that we see in the TLR calculation here. In addition to the bus sensitivities, we can also look at the other half of the transaction being represented by the different injection groups in the system, the different areas, in which case the generators in those areas participate according to their participation factors, and then there's also a tab for generator sensitivities, which is essentially the same as the bus sensitivities, but it looks only at the buses that have generators. It also shows some information about the present operating condition of the generators. So this is essentially a generator record display with the P sensitivity column, which is the TLR column, shown on the display. This slide explains some of the options for setting up the TLR calculation. And just as a point of uh, clarification, the GSF or the generator shift factor is basically the same calculation as the TLR, uh, but sometimes in industry where generator shift factors uh, term is used, it implies that the buyer is the slack bus. Of course, in the dialog in simulator, you can choose the slack bus as being the transactor, and you could specify it also as being the buyer. Then the sensitivities represent injections into each of the buses in the system or at each of the generators that are being withdrawn then at the slack bus. And this slide shows the TLR dialog. Another option, if you use the area, zone, super area, or injection group as a transactor, you have the option of choosing to include only the AGC-able generators in that transactor. Another tool inside the PTDF dialog is the multiple direction PTDF, which is one way of allowing you to calculate more factors to compute a larger part of this imaginary table of directions 
and then transmission elements with the sensitivities inside the table. You can specify a list of directions, which are basically pairs of transfers. There's a little note of caution here in that if you choose too many different transfer de directions, then it could take a long time to calculate the results and, more importantly, it could require a lot of memory in order to store the results. In Simulator, if I go back to my PTDF dialog, I have the option of choosing a multiple direction PTDF by selecting this button right here. Then in this section right here, I can insert different transfer directions. To insert transfer directions, right click in the grid and then choose Insert. The direction dialog pops up and then you can specify the source in the sink just like we did in the single in the simple PTDF. So for example, I could choose bus 2 to bus 5 as I had before. Then I have to give the direction a name and I can just call it uh, for example 2 to 5 and then click OK. And there's also an option for auto-inserting direction records. If I go to this direction records item on the local menu after right-clicking, I can choose auto-insert directions. There are several different options for the type of direction. I will choose the area to area, area to area direction. And then I'm going to clear this box right here for deleting the existing directions if I want to keep the one that I just inserted from bus 2 to bus 5. And then on the confirmation dialog, I'll click yes. And now I have four different directions. If I don't wish to calculate a PTDF for every direction in my list, I can just toggle the include field for that direction to no. I can choose to calculate the PTDFs on interfaces, on lines and transformers, or both. If I wish to show the lines and transformers in the results, I'll click that, and then I'll get a tab down here for each of the different objects, the lines and transformers and the interfaces. The table down here will show a column for every direction that I've added. When I'm ready to make the calculation, I'll click Calculate PTDFs. And then the results will be shown for each line and transformer on this tab, and then each of the transfer directions. I'll get a different PTDF. And then I can also explore the results for the interfaces. This slide summarizes some of the features for the PTDF dialog with multiple transfer directions. We can also calculate sections of the table with the multiple element TLR tool. So if I go back to my TLR dialog and for device type choose multiple elements, I then have the option of choosing lines and transformers or interfaces or both and then I can choose individual devices I can choose the set of all overloaded devices and those are uh, devices that are overloaded in the present case or the contingency overloaded devices for this last option I need to first run the contingency analysis so that the results of the overloading on each transmission line, transformer, and interface is stored. To use the selected devices, you can choose one or both of these buttons right here to bring up a new display for selecting branches or interfaces. So I can take a few of these transmission lines and toggle their selected field to yes, and then close the dialog.
Next, I need to choose a transactor for one half of the transaction, as I did before. I'll specify again uh, bus 5 as the buyer. Then, when I click Calculate TLR Sensitivities, I'll get a column in the results table for each of the transmission lines that meets the criteria up here, either being a selected device, uh, as I chose, or if I chose overloaded devices or contingency overloaded devices, then I would get a single column for each element that meets that criteria. So on this results tab, the multiple bus sensitivities, I have all the buses in my system as I did before, and then I have a separate column for the TLR of this transaction with respect to each of the lines. So I've got the TLRs for the line from 1 to 2, circuit 1, 1 to 3, circuit 1, and 2 to 3, circuit 1. I also have two special columns which are added called the ETLR and the WTLR. The ETLR is just a simple sum of the TLRs for each of the different elements. The WTLR is a weighted sum where the weighting depends both on the flow of each of the lines and then also the direction of the flow on the each of the lines. Whether the transaction tends to increase the existing flow on the line or produce counterflow. So the high positive WTLR for bus 1 means that an injection at bus 1 taken out at bus 5 is going to have a net increase on the flow of these selected lines. If I look at the WTLR for bus 3, it's the highest negative WTLR. And of course I can sort it like so. And so the negative uh, 0.182 is an indication that the transfer with an injection at bus 3 that's withdrawn at bus 5 is going to tend to decrease flow on my selected lines. Power World Corporation developed this tool for a consulting study that we did for Davis Power Consultants and the California Energy Commission. In that study, we looked at the impact on the transmission system of injecting new renewable generation resources at different points in the system. With the WTLR, we were able to evaluate which locations would be good and bad for the contingency overloading on the transmission system and then create a contour map which could be overlaid with other maps which showed where resources such as wind, solar, and biomass were located. More information about this study and the application of the tool can be found on our website under Resources then Renewable Energy. This slide explains the different advantages of using either the multiple direction PTDF or the multiple element TLR. If you want to examine all of the transmission lines in the system but have just a few transfer directions, then the multiple direction PTDF works best. If on the other hand you want to look at power injections throughout the system but are only concerned with a relatively small number of lines, transformers, or interfaces, then the multiple element TLR works best. This slide recaps some of the features of the multiple element TLR dialog. The next sensitivity that we'll look at is called the line outage distribution factor. The LODF is another linear sensitivity which looks at the impact of opening a normally closed transmission line and it looks at that impact across all the other transmission branches in the system. You can also examine the impact of closing a line that's normally open. To perform the calculation, we first specify the transmission branch to either open or close. Then the calculation will determine what percent of the flow that was on that line, if it's a branch that you're opening, what percent of flow that was on that line will appear on the other transmission lines. 
If the branch was initially open and you're calculating the line closure distribution factor, then the calculation will give you what percentage of the post-closure flow on that line appears on the other lines. So again, on the tools ribbon, we'll go to sensitivities and then line outage distribution factors. Let's calculate the LODF for the outage of the transmission line between bus 1 and bus 2. We'll specify the action as an outage sensitivity since this line is already closed in the system and we want to determine what happens after it's open. We can choose between the lossless DC and the lossless DC with phase shifters calculation method. And then when we're ready to calculate, we click Calculate LODFs. The results show in the grid below. I can see for each transmission line on the system what the LODF is. In the case of the line between 1 and 2, which is the same line that we outaged, the LODF is a negative 100%, which makes sense. If we take that line out of service, 100% of its flow before the outage will go away. Similarly, the LODF on the line between bus 1 and 3 is 100%, which, if we look at our case, makes sense because if we take the line from 1 to 2 out of service, then the line between 1 and 3 becomes radial and in the entire flow that was going on 1 to 2 will now go on 1 to 3 because we have the generator here which is then ra radially connected to the system through 1 to 3. To look at the line closure distribution factors I could take a line out of service such as the line between 2 and 5 then resolve the power flow Then go back to my LODF dialog and here instead of the outage sensitivity I'll specify that I want to calculate the closure sensitivities and then I'll choose my line between 2 and 5 and then calculate the LODF. Now the results tell me what percentage of the post-closure flow on line 2 to 5 would appear on each of the other lines in the system. This slide summarizes the features of the LODF dialog. Also the note here in, as far as selecting the action of the outage sensitivities or the closure sensitivities that can be done for you. You don't actually have to specify that yourself. Uh, when you click calculate LODFs if the line is in the system then simulator will select the option for outage sensitivities. If the line is out of service to be in with, then simulator will automatically select the action for the closure sensitivities. You can also perform a multiple element LODF with the LODF matrix. If I choose the LODF matrix, I can then choose which lines to process. It can be all the lines in the system, the lines that meet the area zone owner filters or you can just choose selected lines in which case you can bring up the dialog for which lines to outage and I'll go ahead and just leave the same selection that I used earlier for the multiple element TLR and then choose close or you can select the lines that meet a certain advanced filter that you've defined. Next we choose which lines to monitor or the set of lines for which we're going to calculate the outage distribution factors. We can choose the same set that we selected before for the outages themselves or we can choose all the lines in the system uh, and similarly to above we can choose those that meet the area zone owner filters, selected lines, or those that meet a particular advanced filter. Since this is a small case, I'm not going to end up with a particularly large table if I choose all AC lines. But you should exercise caution if you've got a large case 
the memory required to store the results might be quite large if you use this option. Next, I'll specify my action as being outage sensitivities. In this case, I do have to manually select the outage sensitivities or else I won't get any results if I leave it on closure sensitivities since all the lines that I selected are all already in the system. So when I'm ready, then I'll click Calculate LODFs to populate the matrix. I can see the results here. Each row represents the line that I've outaged. In this case, the selected lines, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, and 2 to 3. And then the columns show the lines that I'm monitoring, or all AC lines in the system. This slide summarizes the LODF dialog with the LODF matrix option. Next, we'll discuss the outage transfer distribution factor, or OTDF. The OTDF is really just a combination of the PTDF and the LODF. There's no dialog in Simulator simply for calculating the OTDFs, but rather Simulator does this internally and reports the results during the ATC calculations. The ATC is our add-on tool for calculating the available transfer capability. The tool will basically tell you the capacity of the transmission network to support a transfer between a buyer and a seller, or a source and a sink. With the ATC tool, you study a transfer between a buyer and a seller, and then Simulator will monitor the flows on all the lines in the system, and then study the effect of those flows for all the outages in the system that are specified by a set of contingencies. The OTDF is then the percent of the transfer between the buyer and the seller that will flow on line, call it line M, after the outage of a different line, line C. The ATC calculation also reports the outage megawatts, which is a linear estimate of the megawatt flow on the line after the other line is outaged. The outage megawatts in the OTDF are thus calculated using the present flows on the lines and the linear sensitivities for the PTDF and the LODF. This slide breaks down the OTDF and the OMW calculations. So in the ATC, we specify a seller and a buyer in part of the system. And then the gray cloud represents the rest of the system. For each line that's being monitored, in this case we'll look at just one, we'll call it line M. And for each contingency, in this case we'll look at the outage of line C, we're going to calculate the OTDF in the outage megawatts as, followed, as follows. The outage megawatts, or the megawatts that are going to flow on line M after the outage of line C, are just the sum of the, the megawatts that flow on line M before the outage, plus the line outage distribution factor times the megawatts that are flowing on line C before the outage. Then the OTDF for line M with the outage of line C is just the PTDF for the same transactors, the same seller and buyers. The PTDF for line M plus the LODF for line M with the outage of line C times the PTDF for line C. In performing an ATC calculation, simulator calculates multiple OTDF and outage megawatt calculations internally. If you need further assistance, please feel free to look us up on the web, give us a call, send email to our support line, or if you prefer to work with a particular PowerWorld engineer, please feel free to contact that person directly.